Okay, so I want to get started right on time since uh, I'm splitting the presentation time here with Glance as well. Um, I am Gabriel Hurley. I am the PTL for Horizon, the OpenStack dashboard project. Uh, I did manage to spell my name and my Twitter handle up there correctly. That's always a good start. <coughs> um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about what uh, we've done here, what we, where we've been, and where we're going. Um, every time I talk about Horizon, I like to start off with um, just why Horizon, what is Horizon, why is it important? Um, because people have a lot of really mixed ideas about this, and I think this is really fundamental to what Horizon is about. Um, Horizon is the OpenStack dashboard. Um, there are a million things that that could be, and when you come to these summits particularly, you see everybody else's dashboards, and you go, oh, that's so cool or so shiny, that one's so new, oh, that one's so ugly, but it does all these other things that we'd like to do. Why doesn't Horizon do those things? Um, the truth of it is that Horizon has the unenviable but extremely crucial task of being the middle ground. <laughs> we want to encompass the whole stack. We want to make sure that all the core projects are represented. We want to make sure that it is accessible to as broad an audience as possible and that you can do as many things with it as possible. Um, and that basically ends up limiting what we can do in terms of narrowing in on really nailing one particular use case in terms of being able to use the latest and greatest technology, um, so on and so forth. But uh, basically, why we have to do this is because we are the face of OpenStack. <laughs> when you see demos of OpenStack, you see Horizon. When you see screenshots in press materials, you see Horizon. When somebody who has never touched OpenStack before says, hey, maybe this OpenStack thing is right for me, they spin up some kind of, uh, they follow one of the installation guides, they use DevStack, and they log into Horizon. So this is the first touch point for almost everyone who comes to OpenStack. Um, and we drive adoption. We are helping make sure that OpenStack spreads. We are helping make sure that new projects are understood and are usable by all the people who are around the world trying to figure out what the heck this OpenStack thing is. We let them jump in, get started, and get going. So that's why Horizon needs to be here. Um, and it's just a matter of how can we satisfy our own desire to create the coolest possible thing while still meeting those goals. Um, so what happened in the last six months? This is a state of the union, as it were. Let's talk about where we were when we started Folsom, what we did getting to Grizzly, and then after that, we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do in Havana. Grizzly, there's your feature list. <laughs> Image upload, instance migration, quantum routers, load balancers, network topology visualization, Phoenix ordering, flavor extra specs, simplified floating IP management, simplified security group rule editing, image organization, API access info all in one place, better unauthorized API error handling, icons, and more. I don't need to go into all those features. If you really want to know, run the dashboard or go read the release notes. I, I do write really good release notes, I promise. <laughs> um, but we did a lot of good things. Um, I want to just call out the large themes there, which is that we um, did a huge amount with the quantum team to make uh, quantum networking uh, much more featureful, uh, much more interesting. Um, one of the coolest things in there is the network topology visualization. You can actually see um, all of your networks and all of your VMs, uh, if your instances in those uh, networks, all laid out in a kind of graph and you can interact with them. Awesome, uh, great job to the quantum team for that. Um, we also did a lot with uh, Glance in terms of uh, image uploading and um, image organization. And uh, we did really, I think more than anything, what we did is we just made the user experience better. We fixed a lot of the long-standing complaints of people having particular problems with one area or another. And there are kind of tricky edge cases where we needed to really drill in and say, what, what is the best solution here? We have implemented this solution and that solution and the other solution, all of them just are dancing around the core issues. So I think we took care of a lot of those issues. And I think as we move forward, people are going to appreciate that a lot without realizing it. So it's the uh, thankless work, but that's OK. Contributors, got to have the stats. Um, more than 20 companies, about 50 contributors. Uh, we, did, we completed 22 blueprints, uh, more than 130 bugs, and a total of about 200 change sets through, uh, through Garrett and into GitHub. Um, that's awesome. It's every time, every release, Horizon grows. More companies, more contributors, more bugs, more blueprints. That's how it should be. Um, but more proud of, I'm more proud of the, these stats than those stats. Um, we added four new core developers um, from three different companies. 
Um, we grew by about 30 contributors. Uh, not that we didn't have about 50 contributors last time, but people come and people go, and we actually gained 30 new contributors this time. Um, really importantly, we started doing our weekly IRC meeting. Um, we talk, we all get together, we talk right after the uh, full OpenStack project update on IRC, same channel in the OpenStack meeting channel. Um, I always forget what time it is in <laughs> UTC, but you can find it on the OpenStack meetings wiki page. Um, I encourage anyone interested in Horizon to attend. You can ask questions there. You can find out what's going on there. Um, it's, it's your opportunity to speak. Um, the mailing list is always there, but this is much more direct. Um, we added a ton of new documentation. And going back to that first point about the, the new core developers from these different companies, when we started the Folsom cycle and in Essex and in Diablo before that, the truth is my company, Nebula, uh, was really dominating the Horizon project. It was almost 100% our commits. Um, all the core devs worked for us, all the active core devs worked for us. Um, we brought in one or two people and they would work for a while. People would contribute to th from the community and I don't want to marginalize anyone's contributions. I mean, we certainly had a lot, but we got accused frequently of Nebula just sort of running the dashboard. Um, that is no longer true. Uh, much to my dismay, uh, Nebula has put a lot less resources towards the dashboard. Um, I'm still very personally committed to it. Uh, I wouldn't be PTL if I wasn't. It's a labor of love. And we are going to continue to build it. But the fact that the community has stepped up and responded um, is fantastic. I couldn't be happier about that. This is what open source, open source is supposed to be. And this is the same story that we tell about OpenStack as a whole. Oh, there was Rackspace, and Rackspace is dominating everything. And no, now Red Hat and everyone else, they've, they've stepped up. And Rackspace is 25%. They're tiny little contributions now. So this is where we should be. Yeah, tiny. You heard me. <laughs> um, I do also like to make the point that in both Folsom and Grizzly and going forward into Havana, um, Horizon is the only project in the core OpenStack that can actually claim full backwards compatibility with the previous release. So I know a lot of people who actually run Grizzly Horizon against Folsom everything else, or Folsom Horizon against Essex everything else, uh, because it works. Uh, all the features are there. Um, there may be minor discrepancies, things that work more or less as intended, but we actually do have compatibility, which is a big it source of pride for me. And of course, Grizzly is the best release of Horizon yet. So what are we doing in the next six months? Havana. We've talked about Havana all week. I should probably actually back that up for a second. We talked about Havana all week. Um, we had great sessions on Tuesday. Uh, I really can't thank everyone enough for their participation. Um, these were some of the best design summit sessions uh, on Horizon we've had in the project's history. Um, and I want to highlight a couple of large themes in the next several slides. Um, the first problem that we really have to tackle is the problem of APIs. We're now on to the Keystone V3 API. We are on to the Glance V2 API. Um, we are soon, soon, <laughs> going to be dealing with the Nova V3 API. Um, and until now, we haven't actually had to, nor has any other project, had to support multiple versions of APIs, which could exist in, say, a, a mixed cloud, or uh, when you're trying to deal with, say, federated clouds or a multi-region um, installation. So this is a big problem. Um, and I've been talking a lot to the other PTLs and to various people in the community while I was here about what's the best way we can support this? How do we do discovery on the API versions for the endpoints? How do we hook in little abstraction layers to switch between the various versions? Um, and even more tricky is what to do about uh, extension detection. So uh, for example, excuse me, uh, Quantum and Nova uh, have huge numbers of extensions which expose different kinds of capabilities. Um, they may enable or disable features. Um, and until now, we haven't been able to do anything about that in Horizon. At best, we could add a setting and the cloud administrator could go in and say, okay, well, my cloud doesn't do X, Y, or Z. Uh, but this, was, this is not a sustainable solution, especially when um, projects are starting to publish actual API endpoints where you can list out what are the capabilities of this service. Um, so that's going to be one of the first targets we hit in the Havana milestone because we have to. Uh, we can't move forward with things like the Keystone V3 API and just forget about V2, not an option. 
So moving on to Keystone, as I've been talking a lot about, V3 API. Um, this is going to happen. <laughs> Everybody, I have been getting asked every, every time I talk to anyone about OpenStack, when do we get the V3 API in Horizon? <coughs> it's happening very soon. Uh, as soon as we solve that previous slide, this happens. Um, that gets us domains. Everybody's interested in domains. That's going to happen. You'll be able to log in to your particular domain if you want to, default domain if not. Uh, you'll be able to manage your domains if you are the Keystone administrator. You'll be able to manage things within your domain if you are a domain administrator, things like that. Um, which, skipping down a couple items, leads us to policy management. Um, all the core projects now are using the uh, policy.json files, using the policy engine to control, basically, role-based access control. Uh, you assign a certain set of capabilities to a role, and you can combine those roles however you like. Uh, Horizon is going to be gaining uh, sort of a bi-directional support there. On the one hand, we're going to consume them and start tailor tailoring the interface uh, based on the capabilities granted to that user is one of the things that the Keystone V3 API gets us. It exposes that read capability there. Um, hopefully, Keystone in the Havana cycle will also add to that API a write capability so that you can, as an administrator, you can start managing your policy files throughout all your projects from Horizon. Because right now, what you have to do is you have to go in and manually edit that file on any server running a copy of Nova, a copy of Keystone, et cetera, and then restart them all. <laughs> That's not ideal. So um, we'll be doing all those things, groups, roles, et cetera, the, basically the missing pieces that people want out of Keystone. Um, networking, quantum. Um, as I said, we did great things in, uh, in Grizzly. There's a lot more cool stuff we can do in Havana. Um, quantum security groups, um, IP management for administrators, uh, network quotas. Um, as I talked a little bit about the visualization interface, we're going to be doing more of that. Um, probably even making that more of a first class citizen. And the more that I've been thinking about it in the couple days that we've been here at the summit, the more I really want to see Horizon, or <laughs> see Quantum become the first class networking solution in Horizon and in OpenStack. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk back and forth about what Nova Network is going to become, how long it will stick around, so on and so forth. Um, do not take anything I say to mean that we will not be supporting Nova Network. Um, that's not going away. As I said, Horizon's mission is to support all the core projects and all their configurations. It's not a simple task, but we do it. Um, but for example, I was seeing the team from Cisco uh, doing their demo of, uh, I've already forgotten the name that starts with a C. What was that? Curvature, yes. <laughs> I was thinking convolution. My thoughts are convoluted. No, I've seen the curvature demo. Um, and the truth is that you can't get to really meaningful um, stacks, as Heat would call them. Uh, and we'll get to Heat in a minute. You can't get to meaningful network topologies, those types of things, with NOAA network. It's just, it's just not possible. Um, and I think it's a much sounder strategy to move forward with all of the brilliant things that quantum enables us craft a great interface around that, and then to work backwards to the much simpler case of Nova Network, where you really are only connecting very, very simple things. Um, so I really, I want to work with everyone to bring quantum to the forefront there um, and see where we can go to make the interface that much more compelling around it. As for heat, um, anyone who has seen what Heat's been doing probably knows that they have been actually been working on a Horizon uh, panel for quite some time. Uh, it basically works as far as I saw on, uh, on Tuesday. We will wrap that up and get that merged very soon. Um, so Heat support is coming as quickly as possible. Um, also, we had talked about uh, doing some of the visualization of stacks, um, taking that network topology view, uh, turning that into a more reusable visualization and being able to uh, give you a couple of different vantage points, maybe perhaps being able to visualize the stack you're about to launch before you launch it, or being able to visualize the stacks that are running and see some information about what's happening in them. Um, and how would you see that information? Well, that means we get to integrate Celometer. And it took me a while to kind of think about this one because the obvious choice is, well, what do you do with Celometer? You throw some graphs in for admin. So, okay, that's not that interesting. Um, I think we can do better. And 
I do still want to have those graphs, but I don't want to just throw like a metrics panel into the admin dashboard. That would be lame. Um, I think one of the first things we can do is to bring um, a lot more rich information to the uh, overview pages when you first log in. So you can see uh, a lot of information about your project. You can see uh, things like what are the uh, top consumers of resources in your project, which instances are using the most CPU, which disks have the most I.O. on them, um, what's using the most of your networking quota. Um, those types of information are so much more valuable than just saying, oh, I'm using nine instances. Okay, who cares? <laughs> um, so I want to bring that to the forefront. Um, we can have charts, we can have graphs. Uh, one of the larger themes of this release is going to be um, unifying our kind of charting and graphing and visualization story. Uh, we're going to use uh, d3.js for any of you who know about JavaScript. Uh, it's a very standard library. Lots of people know it. You can do really cool things with it. It gives us a lot of latitude to go forward. Um, but so yeah, we'll have those types of things. But my bigger story around Solometer is I want to bring data everywhere. I want any, any place that you're looking in Horizon can have meaningful context around it. And Solometer measures all of that. And we need to be hooking that in. So for example, if you are looking at your list of instances, and right now you get that very static table. Well, what if you had a little spark line for your C CPU usage next to each of those instances? What if you had uh, little charts for, uh, for memory utilization, a uh, little bar graph, something like that? You can actually learn something about what's going on with those instances right then and there. It gives you much more meaningful uh, interactions with the entire cloud. Um, another great suggestion, which I hope at some point could come to pass, is to uh, build on what is coming with auto scaling in Heat or wherever it ends up being, um, to take those triggering points, those triggering metrics, and tie that into something that could be displayed on your list of stacks and say, okay, well, uh, on these stacks I care about uh, CPU load. And you know that this stack is really close to its trigger point and that something is gonna happen there while this other one is completely unutilized. Uh, but you could do this across any metrics that you actually care about. It's a more dynamic system. Um, so there's a lot we can do there. Um, I think it's an ongoing task to identify more places where we can bring value um, to the users based on that information. We didn't really talk about Nova explicitly at this summit, but I, I always go through all of the blueprints and all of the kind of recent uh, mail conversations and such that I've had uh, before these, these talks and before these summits. And there are a couple themes that I, I see in Nova that people really want. One is uh, the per project flavors, uh, which is just a good idea. Um, another really good one is uh, in, in Grizzly, uh, Nova added this idea of, a kind of an instance action history. So you can actually go in and see all the things that you did to this instance over the course of its, uh, its life cycle, so that would be very useful. Um, and then there's a lot we can do about uh, availability zones, uh, both from an admin perspective and an end user perspective. We can do uh, some richer things there, especially once we get uh, things like the capabilities detection in there so we know what we can actually do with Nova. Um, and same deal with uh, adding more information about hypervisors. That's something that uh, that particular cloud deployment the administrators find that valuable, we should be able to display that to them. Um, and the, the hooks are there at this point, so we can, we can do that. In terms of how we get there, particularly in terms of things like these complex visualizations and in terms of integrating uh, Celometer data all over the place, um, we can't do this all before the page loads. We can't be sitting there waiting for 10 different data sources, API calls, come back on the server side. That's just, it doesn't scale. It's not the way, it's not the right thing to do. And we've gone back and forth on what to do about it for a couple releases now. I can't say that the answers are that much better, but I think we're getting closer. Um, I think what we got across the rest of the stack in Grizzly has really brought us to a place where we can start accomplishing something meaningful here, particularly uh, things like the fact that the RPC communication uh, library is being moved into Oslo, the, the common library, uh, means that we can much more easily uh, bring that into Horizon and just hook into all of the other projects' uh, notification systems, uh, much like Celometer does, and we can start consuming those, those messages and taking actions on them. Uh, other things like the fact that uh, there's talk about this uh, auto-scaling API, API having a, sort of a webhook-like function so that we can add in, uh, just pass along a little URL and say, hey, why don't you ping Horizon every time uh, you have a scaling trigger and then we can take action on that. Um, 
all of these hooks end up going into something we need to create, which is a very simple uh, kind of backend communication channel, something that allows us to uh, grab these messages, turn them into a format that works for us, and then push them up to the, uh, to the front end asynchronously. And to do that, we're going to use socket.io, which a lot of you, I'm sure, are aware of. Um, there are some details which we need to do proof of concepts of uh, as far as what the back end will look like to be able to do um, different kinds of, of socket communication that could be web sockets. Socket.io also supports a lot of uh, other things like Ajax and XHR polling, um, so on and so forth. I don't want to get into the details of it because the details are what we have to work out. <laughs> uh, but this is coming. We can't avoid this anymore. Uh, and that really is going to drive our ability to build much richer interactions in the dashboard. Uh, aside from that, what I want to make clear is that we are not going to lose the base functionality for people who don't want real-time channels, don't want extra ports open on their, on their deployments for security reasons, don't want, uh, have restrictive browser policies, can't use JavaScript, can't use whatever else. Um, my commitment is to always maintain the core functionality of Horizon for those people. Um, you may not get the best experience, but you will still always be able to use it. Um, that's, that's the distinction. Um, I think that's all I had, and I'm out of time because Glance is about to come up and talk about what they're doing. Uh, I want to give a real quick opportunity for questions, but basically, let's do this and I'll see you all in Hong Kong. It's going to be great. So. I'll take maybe two or three questions if you have them. Uh, if you can step up the mic, that's ideal. Otherwise, shout it out real quick and I will repeat it. Billing. Billing is not something I want to see in Horizon as a core function. It is something I'm very happy to talk with anyone interested about as far as how to build something on Horizon that you can basically sell to your customers or whoever it is, your enterprise that needs it. Um, but the problem of billing is one that cannot be solved generically, in my opinion. There's no right answer for billing. Um, so we want to give people the capabilities, but not build it ourselves. What do you view as the role of Horizon for self-service portals? Uh, what do I view as the role of Horizon for self-service portals? I think Horizon uh, is a great fit for that. I think we can do a lot there. It's probably something we need to um, basically allow people to enable or disable as they need, but we can do a lot kind of behind the scenes, under the hood to simplify the process for end users to get up and running in environments where that's appropriate, like a, like a free cloud, yeah. Uh, if one was new to Build, what should we do today to find out what you need to network them? Like, like logging into Ubisoft somewhere or like dialing some numbers? Uh, the question is, for someone who is new to OpenStack or Horizon, what's the easiest way to find out uh, about all these cool things that we're doing in networking. Um, DevStack is probably the easiest way if you want to actually try anything. Um, otherwise, yeah, screenshots are floating around the web. Uh, we should probably have a more coherent place for getting those up to date. I know the marketing committee uh, for the foundation often just grabs a bunch of them and does, uh, they do screencasts and things like that. But I don't have a great answer for you. <laughs> uh, one more, if anybody's got one. No? Great. Thank you all. It's been excellent.
Okay. I don't know. Oh, I'm on. Okay, that's good. Uh, we should probably get started. We only have about 15 minutes, but I probably won't take up the whole time anyway. Um, I should introduce myself. I'm Mark Washenberger, or Mark Wash for short. Um, I'm the PTL for OpenStack Image, or I usually call it Glance um, for the Havana Cycle. Um, so this is the project update. So let's get started. Try to get started. Oh no. What's happening? It's uploading the image. <laughs> there we go. All right, excellent. Okay, so first let's talk about what happened in Grizzly, which I'll pretend to be the most qualified person to talk about, but I'm not really since I'm the PTL for the coming cycle and whatnot for the previous. But there are definitely some things we got done in Grizzly that I'd like to highlight. Um, in particular, we worked pretty hard on Glance, or I should say OpenStack Image uh, <coughs> API version two, um, and actually released um, version 2.1, which is, is just additional features on top of version two. Um, what I'd really like to highlight for people is that we now have image sharing supported in V2, and it, it's actually much better than it is in V1. I don't know if you know anything about this, but uh, in V1, if you try to share an image, or if you share an image with somebody, it shows up in their list, right? So without them having any kind of interdiction at all. So um, basically you could just constantly grief them if you wanted with some sort of, maybe I shouldn't even be telling everybody about this, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll motivate, we'll, we'll drive traction for V2 by releasing this. Um, we also added, th this is a more minor point, but uh, we added JSON patch support for modifying entities. Um, we're kind of an early adopter with the JSON patch <laughs> schemes, so we had to play catch up during this, during Grizzly. Um, and then also during Grizzly, we just had a lot of internal structural improvements, um, bug fixes and things like that, um, that you know, you <laughs> won't highlight any feature list, but make life um, as a developer in Glance much, much better. Um, should help us out in the long term. Um, there were a number of also small administrative improvements, and if you really want to dig into the details there, you should look at the um, Grizzly release notes. <coughs> So we've just added um, the required contribution slides. So fortunately, all these statistics are easily available. So we actually had more change sets than Horizon, so I'm proud of that. Um, <laughs> however, if you take a look at the lines added and lines removed, I'm sad to say that we did actually add code on the whole to Glance at this time. So it's always great when you can add features but cut down on the amount of code. So that's, that'll be the goal for Havana. We'll see how we do. Um, you can see we had 64 developers, but we've had a pretty close-knit community, so it's been very nice working with them across 23 employers, and this is where you get those bugs that, that we fix. That's a lot of, a lot of those lines. We fixed one bug. Well, okay, that's <laughs> good. How many did you start with? All right. Okay, so we, we're, we pretty much closed up our part of the Havana Summit. And I just wanted to give everybody an idea of the topics we've been discussing so they know sort of you know, what we're thinking about, what's sort of on the top of our mind. Um, we've had a session about trying to make end user direct use of Glance better. And if that doesn't make sense, I should make clear that a lot of large deployers don't actually expose um, the OpenStack Images API to their end users. They just sort of hide it behind Nova, which has an endpoint that proxies to it. So there are a number of features that we're looking at and trying to target so that we can make that just completely open. Um, it should help to separate out those services. And maybe we can help delete some code in Nova. That'd be great. Um, we've been definitely thinking a lot about image transfers and how to make that faster. Um, it's, it's definitely possible with Glance acting as a middleman to sort of <coughs> shoot yourself in the foot in terms of networking performance. So we're looking at ways to make that just as fast as you can possibly make it. Um, there's been a lot of interest around image conversion, a lot of controversy as well. Um, so we've been discussing that. Um, there's also been a proposal from Rackspace in particular to try to reach feature parity with EC2 on their copy image feature, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Essentially the idea is you have a different region, say, and you have uh, someone has an image in one region and they want to copy it to another one so that they can have faster boot times in that region. We've also had, uh, we've be been beginning the discussion of 
how could Glance support um, rolling database migrations? Um, this has been a big theme across all of OpenStack, and Glance is sort of a good guinea pig for this because it's not as complex as the other projects, and it, it's actually just easier. Uh, they're just the problems are a lot easier to solve there. So we'll see if, how much of that we can get done in fairness. So now moving into the forward-looking, like the truly forward-looking part of the presentation. So everybody take everything I say with you know a little bit of extra uh, forbearance, I guess we'll say. Um, some of the things we've been looking at um, to get done in Havana, these basically correspond to Launchpad blueprints that have been approved or about to be approved. We've been looking at deprecating, how do we deprecate the Glance registry? Um, it's a helpful um, artifact to have for some deployments um, where you have all these image workers that are doing large data streaming, but then just one component that talks to the database and sort of you, you have one only one place that needs to know about database credentials. Um, but it just makes it really slow. It means that the latency is just terrible. So you, you do a one request and it talks to Keystone out here, then it talks to the registry, which talks to Keystone, then talks to the database. So you're, you're basically getting five latencies when you really only want one or two. Um, but at the same time, we want to support backwards compatible um, deployment sort of uh, semantics. So don't worry about that if that sounds scary. We'll make sure that it works for you. Um, we've been looking at ACLs for image properties. This is something that we were looking at in Grizzly but didn't get around to. The idea is to have um, certain properties that a deployer says um, basically a user can't change or um, maybe a user can't even see those properties. So it's helpful for some sort of sort of secret accounting through metadata. Um, there's been a lot of talk about quotas. Um, there's some more sessions about quotas in general uh, coming today, so we'll see how that pans out. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, the copy image functionality, we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at that. I think we, we're pretty much ready to move ahead with that. Um, one of the steps that we actually talked about in Grizzly and feel like is really helpful for the process of image conversion and for some of the steps that we need in order to copy images around is to have, to introduce the idea of asynchronous workers in Glance. Um, you know, Nova obviously already has this. They have um, the compute worker that's just living off on your hypervisor doing all the work that it needs to do as commands come in. And we're looking at how can we add that and what's the right way to do that without burdening smaller deployments. Um, we've also, Talking about performance earlier, it seems like the goal right now is to just, um, when you store the image you know, in something like Swift um, and Glance is just proxying it out, maybe we can look at just exposing that Swift location directly or wherever it's stored so that the end user can just, um, not the end user, but the client can just stream down from there rather than funneling and proxying everything through Glance. That's sort of our performance. <coughs> so I don't have a CU in Hong Kong uh, slide, but I do hope to see people in Hong Kong, so that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? All right. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs>